Well, good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, sunny California. Well, sunny again. We got a little rain again yesterday, which is like a really weird year for us because <laughs> we're like usually all about the drought down here. Um, anyway, uh, sorry I didn't put out a video last Sunday. Uh, we've been prepping for this upcoming uh, work and uh, it's mm, there's a lot of work involved in it. Um, luckily, not too much on my part, but um, just coordinating everything is kind of, yeah, it's hard to coordinate uh, all the vendors. It's like herding cats. Um, and then on top of the regular job I have to do. So um, so anyway, uh, I thought I'd, I'd go into a little more detail about what happened on our last um, uh, network maintenance. And I'm also show you what uh, it's going to happen on our net next network maintenance, which we will be doing by the time you see this video. So that will be happening uh, as you're watching this, as some of you are watching this. All right, as one of you are watching this. Um, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, come on, there we go. Uh, I want to share this guy trusty notepad yeah anyway, so i won't be looking directly at the camera i'm going to be looking right here so if i look funny that's why so if you see what we have here this this is um we have two firewalls we have a segmentation firewall over here that's not in production right now and we have an edge firewall and the edge firewall is basically our internet firewall that's in use so we use that um what we had before is I forgot to put these in, but we uh, um, we have five VRFs working inside of our core switches. We have four core switches. They all share info with each other. Um, but each V but these five VRFs are set up in each core switch. So we got sixteen no twenty VRFs basically to manage, which is what makes this kind of complex. Um, and what's a VRF? It's a virtual router, basically. I think it stands for virtual routing and forwarding. Um, but it's basically just a virtual router. Um, take the concept of a VLAN and apply it to routing, and that's a VRF. So we have five of them now. Uh, we actually have six. We don't use the sixth one. It's just a test VRF. But the five ones we're concerned about is servers, users, Wi-Fi, Internet of Things, which is just basically devices that don't really have users on them. And um, we have a voice VRF for our, our VoIP uh, networks. And the way these guys all route to each other, the way they, I mean, they're, they're like their own little island. They don't talk to each other. They're VLANs. So you need something to route to them. Right now, what we have is something called, let me put it right here, a route leak. And uh, let me put that in a box. It's not a separate router, but it's just a command, basically, one command. And what that, base, that route leak basically does is allows this VRF and this VRF to speak to one another. And, uh, you know, before I do that, let me let me copy this because we're going to need a couple more of these route leaks. Um, we need one between each VRF. Now, we don't need, like, the server's VRF to the user's VRF and then to the Wi-Fi VRF and then to the IoT. So it's not like that. Um, we just need a few of these in each because uh, just like any router they all know they only need to know about the next hop so we have these route league statements that connect uh, the vrfs to one another and he connects to that and he connects to that and so that's why all these um Oops, put you down there and put you up there. You know, I never really used paint for network documentation. 
until our I saw our extreme engineer doing it quite a bit. And I thought, you know what? Why not? I never use paint for anything. Um, so there you go. We have these route leaks that that advertise all the routes in between all these VRFs. So voice voice can get to servers because of this route leak pointing it to IoT and IoT knows to go to get up to servers to go to here, to go to here, to go to here. So we got these route leaks. And um, so last week we had one uh, gateway of last resort, you, you can say default, not the default gateway, but a gateway of last resort, the 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 route. Um, a lot of times people will call it the default gateway and a lot of times that's what it is, but it's, it's really the gateway of last resort. And for us last week, um, to get to the gateway of last resort, everybody had to point to the user's VRF and that pointed to the edge firewall. Um, let me mark this. So 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 slash zero. You know, to, for anybody to get there, the servers or the Wi-Fi mostly, IoT and voice, not so much, but these three, they would go to the user's VRF and it would go straight up the firewall. We picked users because that has the most VLANs in it. There's like 120, 130 VLANs in this one. Yeah, I know that's a lot. Um, so we picked it to do all the forwarding before. So last week, what we did is added the gateway of last resort to all these other VRFs instead of saying, okay, if you want to go, if you don't know where else to go, go to users. And then users would say, if you don't, I don't know where to go. So go to the firewall. What we did was basically for all the VRFs, we added a 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 route statically pointing to the edge firewall. So that's that's how. So they're not having to go to the. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm, it's early and I'm a little tongue tied. So each VLAN, each. Uh, <laughs> whoops! What'd you do there? Let's do this again. One more time. There we go. Let me put these all in here and I will continue talking because apparently I can't chew gum and walk at the same time. So there, each VRF had its own gateway of last resort pointing to the edge firewall. Uh, we were able to do that last week with no problem. We didn't have to take any of these route leaks out because you know, they wouldn't even have tried to go anywhere. We, we said, just just go, if you need to go out to the internet, basically, just go to the edge firewall. If you need to go to these other uh, VLANs, still take the route leak to get there. So that's where it sits today. What we are going to new, do next week is basically um, this. We are going to add Basically, we're going to set up all these VRFs, servers, users, Wi-Fi, IoT, blah, 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 blah. We're going to set those up in the segmentation firewall. Um, let's move this up out of the way a little bit more. And I'm just going to add that we're going to, I'm not going to put them inside, but we're going to add the servers. And over on Palo Alto, they just call it a virtual router, users, virtual router, Wi-Fi, virtual router, IoT, virtual router, and voice, virtual router. So we're going to add all those virtual routers in there. And the only way we'll allow these virtual routers to talk to one another is through policies and rules that we set up within the firewall. So right now, there's nothing preventing any of these from talking to one another. After next week's work, what we are basically going to do is we are going to take this guy. All these route leaks are going to go away.
So the route leaks are gone. And what we were going to tell them is to get to anywhere else first, you go here. So we're going to tell it, this guy is going to know about all these subnets in here. And to get to one another, to get to the internet, they can still go straight out this way. But to get to one another, they have to go to the segmentation firewall. So what that's going to do for us, I guess I should have drawn that, drawn that on the other side. You know what? Let me do that. Make it more clear for me. Let me move the, oops. <laughs> Let me move these right over here. And let me move all of this over here. Let me move all of this over just a tad. Let's move these over. Don't you love sitting here watching me draw on the fly? Okay. Let's do this again. Um, get a little bit more room here, make it more clear. All right. So anyway, back to the lines. Let's put these all in. All right. So to talk to one another, to talk to one another, um, all these VRFs are going to have to go to the segmentation firewall, which is going to also have virtual routers for all these same subnets. Um, so if I want to go anywhere within the list of subnets it's going to have, it's going to head to the segmentation firewall, which will make a decision based on policies and uh, security policies, whether to let the traffic go. Um, I believe... Yeah, to go out straight out to the internet, I believe we're going to leave this in place. Um, yeah, I think we are. So basically, any internal routing will be handled by the segmentation firewall. All the route leaks will be taken off here, and all external routing will be handled by the edge firewall. Um, it's going to be as simple as that. Well, not quite so simple, because like I said, we still have to keep four different copies of these five IoT, uh, five VRFs including the IoT VRF. Um, so what you see right here, that's phase two of this. Phase one was just adding these um, gateways of last resort. Phase two, coming up next week, as you're watching this, we will be doing that, um, is adding the segmentation firewall into the internal routing mix. And then <clears throat> phase three will be to... Uh, remove the VRFs from two of the cores. So we'll have VRFs running on just two cores. Um, so basically, it's going to be <laughs> two. Well, that I did just put in two. And then the other two, the other two core switches will just be layer two switches. And that's just an, an attempt to make it a little easier for us to manage. So when we do make changes, we don't have to, you know, make 20 different changes, you know, potentially 20 different changes for one, <laughs> excuse me, for one subnet. So anyway, um, there you go. I think I've rambled on long enough. That's, that's basically we, what we got coming up. Um, and like I said, we will be doing that by the time you watch this. So uh, I'll do a probably a YouTube short later on that day, just kind of a recap of what really happened and how did everything go. Um, we were very fortunate in that when we did the, the phase one changes with the default gateways here, that there was no user impact whatsoever. Users didn't notice a thing. We added these routes in before we made it made any changes to the VRFs. So 
the users didn't even know because these these static routes here were these guys were already in place. Um, this one not so much because uh, we're going to try. I think the consultants are going to try their best to get all these routes all set up ahead of time, and then just remove the route leaks, boom, in one fell swoop, and then folks won't notice any downtime. That's assuming all these VRFs are communicating. The virtual routers on Palo Alto are communicating correctly and that uh, the security policies are right, which uh, Burwood does good work. Burwood's doing the Palo Alto side of things. Extreme Networks is doing the, uh, the uh, switching side of things. I'm sorry, an alarm just went off over there, so it's got me distracted. Doesn't mean anything. It's just it's a false alarm. So anyway, um, there you go. That's the uh, upshot. So anyway, if you liked what you saw, click the uh, subscribe button, the notification bell, and the thumbs up button. And uh, if you have any questions about what we're doing, um, I'll do my best to try to answer them. Uh, I'll leave it in the comments below. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next Sunday. And uh, I'll let you know how things went. So anyway, uh, let me get finished sharing here so I can say goodbye to everybody. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, folks. We'll talk to you on Sunday. God bless. And where's the stop? There's.